Carl and Brendan here, 10 things time. It is 10 things about a fucking institution. It is 10 things we love about Iron Maiden. Of course, 10 things from me, 10 things from you. And later, amazingly, we are going to attempt to do 10 things we both hate about Iron Maiden. Although this might be a term where, similar when we did Devon Townsend, where it's like mildly dislike about Iron Maiden because to yeah. hate this band is near impossible. But I will say, I also struggle to find 10 things I love about them because let's get this out here at the start. Neither of us are what you would call big Iron Maiden fans. I think we both respect, enjoy, and like a lot of what they do. But you know that hardcore Iron Maiden fandom? We're not part of that. Nope. Simple as that. We're not in the signed up to the fan club. Mm, no, sir. In fact, I've never seen them live at festivals. Yeah. So long as that. Should we get started with this one then? Yeah, okay, cool. So no particular order uh, because there is no particular order to them. <laughs> um, so my first one is just the, simply the fact that they're from the home country. Mm. Um, obviously East London formed back in Leighton in 1975. Um, and there's a little sense of, I don't know if it's stupid or not, patriotism or national pride in seeing an influential band spring forth, not just from your home country, but from your home city. Um, and obviously the UK being seen as a place where heavy metal was born through the likes of Black Sabbath and you know some people trace it back further. And it's, it's cool then that you're seeing sort of like 10 years after that, bands like Maiden come along, pick up the mantle, pioneer the whole new wave of British heavy metal and inspire the rest of the world. So yeah, it's a bit of pride. They're, they, they come from here, they're ours. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I have something similar. Uh, I don't have that sense of uh, patriotism, uh, whatever you want to call it, as Brenda does, because I happen to not be from... England or Britain, but I am pretty much British anyway, you know, I'm a Londoner, I like to say, you know, um, but they are a British institution. And we're not just talking here a best of British heavy metal band. We are talking about a band that is considered one of the best in the world, that has worldwide reach across continents, countries, you name it, Iron Maiden are known around the entire world, can play arenas, stadiums, in the world. I mean, geez, one of the biggest live shows is Rock in Rio in Brazil. Yep. Um, that is incredible. And they're a British band. That ultimately, you've got to have a level of pride in that. You know, we don't have many big British bands, but we do have some of the fucking biggest in Iron Maiden and say Sabbath and, and Priest. Do you know what I mean? So big up that shit. Yeah. Big it up. Yeah. Cool. So back to me. Yep. Uh, that generally they're nice guys. <laughs> um, you know, Maiden never seem to find themselves in too difficult a position or never seem to be embroiled in too big an argument or in a fight with other bands or, you know, they did. And then on top of that, they also do quite a bit in the, in the charity side of things. So, you know, things for like the light brigade um, beer, which was all brewed to raise funds for help for heroes. Mm. There were a lot of support for child line, sport relief, where I think he flew the CEO of Sainsbury's uh, to six different locations in the UK in one day, all raising money for sport relief. And, and then you can get into the bigger things to the effort that they put into putting on their Sarajevo concert documentary during raw time, which since then Bosnian leaders have claimed actually helped them to take a look at themselves and bring about peace in a war-torn country. And has since, uh, since then seen Bruce be named as an honorary citizen of the city for his efforts. Amazing. In... Look at that story. And you think like, you know, like you said, what's not to like about that? <laughs> you know? That is simply phenomenal. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> oh, how do I follow that? <laughs> my next one is so stupidly crap. And it's simply put, the one of the last big bands we have left, as time goes by, as age kicks in, uh, we're slowly watching a whittling down of the legendary bands we have. Um, and you look at a lot of them, you look at the likes of, say, Priest, um, Black Sabbath, people like that, and obviously they're winding up their careers to a degree. When I look at Iron Maiden, I don't see that immensely for some reason. I don't think, oh, yeah, they'll be done in two years' time. I'm like, no, they'll probably still be around in 10 years' time. Um, yeah, they're just one of the last big bands we have left, and we should appreciate that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I like the fact that they pretty much stay true to themselves throughout. Yeah, yeah they're one of the very few bands of metal to get anywhere around the status of your Metallicas and whatnot. 
and they did that with very very little change in the way of their from their core sound you know maiden just maiden they've always been made and then, yeah of course you get variations on albums mm -hmm. but you know, never to the point where you go oh that doesn't sound like maiden no you know so you know no country cover there's nothing like that it's just they've done what they wanted to do all the way through and still made it to that scale which is cool as fuck <coughs> oh agreed and kind of contrary to that i've gone with uh that fact that they've adapted with time and evolved when they've needed to introduce in things like synth keyboards more melody particularly with later albums and so on and how experimental they've chosen to be at certain points in their career one of the you know always one of the more impressive things is when i'm made enough playing it's not like they're going, okay, right, cool. Uh, we haven't released an album in 20 years. It's time for, uh, you know, it's time, you know, it, it's a constant flow of yeah. what they're doing now. Cool. Uh, Bruce Dickinson's energy. <laughs> this man loves what he does. Like, and his live performances fucking ooze enthusiasm and effort. And just seeing him running from one end of the stage to the next, waving flags, jumping around like a possessed little fucking imp. <laughs> Probably accidentally offending every maiden fan of the world. I didn't mean it in a bad way. I know what you mean. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome to watch. Yeah. I mean, I got Bruce Dickinson. I just wrote Bruce Dickinson as the man. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're talking, you've already highlighted the energy side of things, but ultimately as well, he seems like a pretty decent dude for the most part. Uh, he's when he left Maiden, he did it because he wanted to focus on his own solo stuff. I don't really think that worked out as well as he wanted to. So he's, he came back to the Maiden fold and has carried on since then. He's an incredible vocalist, uh, one willing to adapt as well to the times. He flies a Boeing. He can fly one, um, obviously stuff like that. Yeah, I just when I look at Bruce Dickinson, I think yeah, you're 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 uh, you're a heavy metal legend. You are Hall of Fame. You're Hall of Fame, without question. You know. Um, nice simple one next for me, guitars, <laughs> you know, blazing dual guitars or three guitars, triple guitars at some points in the uh, band's done history as well. Mm. Uh, then obviously not shy of big solos, not shy of like just literally having three, four minute long kind of harmonized speed melodies and solos going off through their music. So, you know, obviously I'm into metal, man, I'm into guitar driven music. Um, I could listen to them play guitar for days. Yeah. Or anyone, but it's about them, I suppose. <laughs> and those three minutes dueling, three minute dueling solos gives Bruce a chance to leg it around the stage a few times. Yeah. Stretch, stretch his legs and exactly. yeah, <laughs> pop a Red Bull. <laughs> um, I kind of touched upon this a little bit already with the adaption, but they're as relevant as ever. The last album, The Book of Souls, was 2015. You know, that's only five years ago, um, 21, so it's technically six, but that's yep. no time in metal. And there's no question that Maiden won't, will, won't have another album out. Um, their relevancy, they want to stay relevant. They do, when they do their tours, they like to tour the albums um, every sort of, rather than just doing a constant, we're doing a best of, that kind of situation. It seems yeah. like it's important for them to continue to put out music and be relevant. And I think that's awesome because we don't have that with a lot of our big remaining bands. No, nope, that is true. Um, Lyrical content. Mm. Uh, I quite like the fact that they tell stories in their lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, I like the fact they, they often deal with majestical occult themes sort of stuff. More familiar, I guess, these days to yeah. true power metal, uh, that side of things. Um, but though obviously made and kind of wrap it up in a more of a, a new wave traditional or occasionally thrash jacket. Mm -hmm. But I like the fact that their lyrical content, you know, it's also to me it just suits the band you know i, I wouldn't want to see maiden writing a serious song about the state of american politics it just ah. it doesn't work for me you know no no that's fair that's fair i like that i like that our next one's like so we're, we're gonna start struggling here so i've just gone the massive back catalog so as a not a big maiden fan it's of, often constantly a bit of discovery well, I'm like, okay, let me listen to some Maiden or maybe we'll be doing a track by track. And it's like, okay, I've never really given this album a deep dive. I know some of the songs off it. And it feels like a constant stage of discovery where it's like, okay, oh, wow. Okay, this is a Paul Diano uh, album. Not really yeah. given this much time or here's Blaze Bailey. Let me have a go with that. Or here's Bruce Dickinson in between the albums where I know really, really strong. Let me hear this and stuff like that. 
So thanks, Maiden, for putting out so many fucking albums. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I like the fact that they're universally popular. Mm. I think they're one of the very few bands in the world that just don't seem to have a mass army of haters that follow them around. I think there are people that adore Maiden, and then there are people like us who don't adore them, but respect them. Mm. And that kind of tends to be all I really run into. I think it's just, it's really cool that the band have managed to create such global mass appeal and respect for themselves that, you know, they don't even they don't even seem to have, I mean, they maybe they're out there, but I haven't seen them. They don't even seem to have like trolls. No. Have you ever spoken to someone that says, I fucking hate that band? No, never. That's the thing. Why? No. Nothing to hate, really, is there? No, I agree. Okay, I've mentioned this story many times in various videos, but I'm going back to my past. And when uh, I first came over to this country, I bought two particular records, the first records I ever bought in this country. One was an EP. I now know, I thought it was an album at the time, but I now know it was an EP. And one was a single. And it was a gatefold single. It folded out three times. It had a really colourful, pretty cover on it. And it was Out of the Silent Planet which is from Brave New World. And it was an Iron Maiden single. I don't buy it because I, I think it was because it was cheap and I was trying to find my feet in the rock and metal world. And it just caught my eye. I had no real knowledge of Maiden. So it was, but yeah, that song and uh, that particular single has lives long in my heart because of it. Cool. A long history with them. Mm. Um, so I guess leading on from that one then is the marketing or the artwork. Um, you know, the whole Eddie character, their artwork is always big and vibrant and interesting and exciting and cool. Yeah. You know, the fact they adorn the stage with props and characters and whatnot is a bonus as well. But, you know, when you see a Maiden album, a T-shirt, a patch on the back of a patch jacket, posters or anything, you know, you're kind of already in your head now know exactly what you're going to see. You know, it's going to be big, it's going to be vibrant, it's going to be memorable. I think that's cool that they, you know, while amassing this great back catalogue and all that, they've also amassed this notion that you don't, you could, you could show me a part of a picture, and I could, I'd probably be able to go, that's Maiden. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that. I was thinking, yeah, I could picture a patch where it's like the Killers cover with Eddie yeah. moving forward or somewhere in time, and you're like, instantly, you, you know, show it. me, show me the pyramids. Like, oh look, here's the pyramids in Egypt. And I'm like Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Right. My second last one, then sticking with the lazy options. But I bought also bought an album later on than I bought the EP and the single. And it was an album. And it was based off the fact that I, I loved Out of the Silent Planet. So I used to say, used to believe that Marilyn Manson Smells Like Children was the first album I ever bought in this country. However, I've st- since learned that that is considered an EP. All right, cool. Put that to the side. What was the first album I bought? Brave New World. And it's still my favorite Maiden album to date, even though it doesn't even have close to their best songs. But tracks like Blood Brothers, Wicker Man, um, these are Out of the Silent Planet. These are just songs that I adore because of that album, even though they're not necessarily the best thing Maiden have ever done, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I like the fact that they are fun. I okay. Think I think just as the band, they're fun. You know, this is the whole thing about seeing bands smiling on stage, bands enjoying what they're doing. They're yeah, considering how long they've been doing it and everything like that. You know, I think it's awesome to see them. They, you know, they don't take things too seriously. They never get too political. It's never too angry. You know, serious music, but it's played with a smile and a laugh. You know, the band have been very clear in interviews that they do what they do because they love it and only for that reason. Mm. Otherwise, they just wouldn't. And it just seems really, really, and that's a thing that a lot of bands will say, but, you know, it just seems true. You see any picture of them, video of them play, playing, and they play with huge beaming smiles on their faces like they are having the time of their lives. And I think that's fantastic. At this stage of their career as well, it's incredible to still yeah. have that much love for what you're doing. The last one. So it's personal, again. But do you know, I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, me and Lou, my wife, uh, have a bet that we consistently keep running at live shows, those things, once upon a time. Um, that wherever gig we're at, it's who can see the first Maiden shirt. And it All normally right. takes less than a minute because someone, whatever gig you're at... It doesn't matter where you are. It kind of ties into what you said about branding. Well, you could be at a Taylor Swift concert or you could be at a fucking goddamn behemoth concert and you will see a maiden shirt. It's even easier. This bet is even easier at a festival. You'll probably go 10 seconds and instantly see one. (laughs) But honestly, the first is who can see the first maiden shirt. There's one. And it's always the same thing. And we laugh and joke about it, but it's just like, 
it speaks to that sort of volume of like that love that it doesn't matter yeah. what the show is there's a maiden shirt yeah that's it, you, isn't it? is it you're never a hundred yards from a maiden fan basically yeah. <laughs> um there you go there's the ten- uh, I, I've got my last one. Oh, i thought yeah okay yeah which is we could have ended anyway it's not, it's not really anything special it's just the fact that um the 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 the, the inspirations i guess they've they've had uh, the bands that have come after them, you know, oh. the bands that they've inspired to pick up a guitar or, or, or whatever it may be, you know, and, and I think it, it crosses genres too, you know, bands and genres from thrash to traditional power rock. And then I wrote, I don't even know, this isn't probably a genre, the post-apocalyptic black and dude fuzz fucking metal. Ah, uh, yeah. All probably, yeah. all sight Iron Maiden as a real inspiration to them, you know, to either pick up a bass, a guitar or a drum set or anything. And just the, the, They've they've shaped metal in such a huge way. It's unreal. Yeah, it. um, I mean, it's not actually it because uh, I, I was puzzled. I was like, "Wait, you started it? How is it you ending it? It should be me ending it." And it is because I did miss one as well. Ah, getting late. Um, simply put, their stage show. Uh, you ever see Maiden gigs and Maiden shows? Depending upon what songs as well, they'll change things up from having Eddie, from being an animatronic and stuff like that. Whether it's the trooper and he's running around in a red coat waving a flag to like the machine gun style of the guitars, to pyramid backgrounds and stuff like that. Maiden have a show. They always seem to bring a show, I guess because they're always fucking playing a stadium on arena. So it's, uh, but I still couldn't imagine if Maiden were like, oh, we're gonna do, do some strip back gigs and play the underworld. Yeah. Um, that would be insane. Uh, <laughs> but I'd still imagine they'd have something or another with them. And it seems like they, they understand the power of a stage show as much as the music. You couldn't imagine seeing Maiden play live, and all they've got is a backdrop with Maiden yeah. on it. You know, going to do an at- acoustic show. There's an idea for the future when they're wrapping <laughs> up <laughs> acoustic tour. People it still sell out arenas. Still yeah, definitely. definitely do it. There we go. There's the proper end. There's the ten things we love about Iron Maiden. Of course, ten things we hate is coming in the future. Make sure you check it out. Let's know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?